Welcome to DMV Spotlight on ESPN 630, the sports capital, where we shine a light on the challenges facing the district, Maryland, and Virginia, and we examine possible solutions with the people and organizations who are working on those challenges. I'm Barbara Britt, and I'm very, very delighted to welcome this morning Lieutenant Kevin Shaw with the Fairfax County Police Department. He's with the Marine Patrol Unit, and Sergeant Greg Bedore with the Fairfax County Police Department Media Relations Bureau, and I want to thank you both for joining me this morning. Thank you for having us. Good morning, Barbara. Well, I wanted to um, just ask you about some of the awesome things that you're doing. I happen to come across this on Facebook, and um, you all are doing an amazing thing called Boaters for Backpacks. So tell me, number one, what it is and how it got started. Uh, originally, we were in a uh, roll call you know normal guys just talking around different ideas things we want to do to partner with the community and a supplemental marine patrol officer who is also a sro a school resource officer in fairfax county came up with an idea to do a boaters for backpacks we had kicked around a few different names uh, for the program and ultimately it is a way for the community and the police department partnering together along with the marinas and of course the uh, great sponsor of vellum mortgage to provide uh, backpacks for children in need in the Fairfax County Public School System. That is awesome. So it, you guys were just sitting around and guys and gals talking about how to help. So um, how did they how did they focus in on backpacks? Is that a is that a need that was identified in the county, or is that just somebody's good idea? So I think it's a combination. I'd like to give him full credit on his good idea, but there is a another uh, nonprofit organization that collects backpacks and helps distribute them throughout the county. It's Collect for Kids. It's a nonprofit run through Fairfax County, like I said, public schools. Uh, so we thought the uh, Marine and uh, all the, the boating community as a whole is very caring. They consider themselves a tight knit group, good family. Um, so we figured they would be perfect sponsors and you know reach out and try and have them assist with collecting these backpacks. And how important is it for for young people when they go back to school to have those new things. I mean, that was always my favorite part of school was getting all the new stuff. Um, but how important is that for a, a child in Fairfax County to, to show up on that first day? I think it's important, uh, certainly for confidence. You know, you have children show up with old hand-me-down things or, or not at all. Uh, so I do think that's the first step in helping these children go in, especially with a new school year coming up. Everyone wants to start their the right foot forward. And like you said, bringing in the new clothes and, and things like that. And there's other organizations that do that. Uh, I think from the police department, we focused in on the backpacks. Uh, I believe we've already had a few where people have put additional items in there, notebooks and pens and paper and stuff like that, which also helps the students and alleviate some of the financial a burden on the teachers that these days actually have to buy their own supplies so and the parents yeah because when they go back and they're like oh by the way we need kleenex and lysol I'm like okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> good absolutely. to know so um when folks are are heading to some of the local marinas and i'll ask you to tell me where they can do that is this this is the spot where they're going to drop them off so yeah we ask for new backpacks uh, not necessarily requesting anything to be put in them but like i said some have uh, the participating locations, the generous marinas and harbors that have given us the opportunity to put a drop box in there would be uh, Belmont Bay Marina, Hoffmasters Marina, Mount Vernon Yacht Club, the Occoquan Harbor Marina, Occoquan Regional Park, Captain John S. Beach Marina, Fairfax Yacht Club, and the Prince William Marina. This is your chance to get into a yacht club if you have ever wanted to walk into one. Just bring some backpacks. Um, so, and did you all reach out to these uh, marinas and, and harbors and things? How did that relationship come about? Uh, like I said, the Marine Patrol uh, has a pretty good relationship as it is already with the boating community. Um, and it was just the next progression to go actually talk to the management and people running the marinas. They've obviously all given us permission to have this drop box put in there. And it's always been a good relationship. So they know most of the Marine Patrol officers by first name. So they go in, they introduce them, they hand it a pamphlet that we have that's uh, posted there at the marinas. And they were all very excited to participate and help out. So it was, it was really light lifting on that part. 
That is awesome. And is this something that um, that Marine Patrol in Fairfax County has done before? No, this is the first year. If it goes well, uh, we'll probably continue it. Of course, you know, with success, it will probably flourish and hopefully push it on to additional marinas down the road. But at this time, those are the participating ones. Like I said, it was easy for them to jump on board, and uh, I think they're very happy and eager to help out. So that's where our listeners come in so that they can be listening and and find out more about where they can turn these backpacks in. So do you have to have a boat to participate? Can you be a landlubber? You can be a landlubber. You can walk up and participate uh, at each, you know, whichever participating marina that you, you live closest to or whichever one you want to participate and donate at. Go in, say, hey, I'm here to drop off a, a backpack, and they'll be more than happy to take it. The... Uh, thing I would encourage people that are donating is on the back of the pamphlet and also located at the drop box is a donation um, slip where you can kind of fill out your name email and phone number and that will enter you into a raffle for a $300 gift card uh, Vellum Mortgage has been generous enough to donate three of those to this so there's gonna be three lucky winners $300 in gas these days Nice. You can't lose there. <laughs> That's fantastic. Can you use it at the marina? Yeah, absolutely. I think that will get Fill you around the dock, right? Yeah, exactly. That's fantastic. So you all have not yet had the experience of passing out these backpacks Not to the yet. Kids. No, we're excited about that, too. That is going to be really, really fun and a great community event as well. Yes, absolutely. So that is fantastic. And so um, if folks are listening today, should they uh, check out Facebook? What's the best way for them if they're listening saying, wow, I'm going to be shopping for my kids or that's something easy for me to do. I can pick one up um, at some of the sporting stores or any of the big department stores. They are all selling backpacks right now. So if you're looking for additional information on it, it's uh, Twitter at Fairfax County PD, or you can go onto our Fairfax County Police Facebook page if you're looking for additional information. This month we're actually highlighting the Marine Patrol unit, so it, it's right there when you go onto the Facebook page at the Fairfax County Police Department. So um, obviously you're going to work in partnership with the Fairfax County uh, Public Schools because this is something, as you mentioned, that they, they have been working on. Um, and I had seen on the on your information page, there's over 50,000 students in Fairfax County who really rely on people to step up and help them. Um, yeah, so those numbers we got actually off the Fairfax County Public Schools website, and, and you know the means of how they generate those numbers is within the Fairfax County Schools. But the more backpacks we get, the more children we get to reach out, and you know our chief is constantly pushing the community partnership, and I believe the leadership in the county police department uh, wants to bring that leadership by engagement with the community together. So it's a great opportunity to go out and see the kids and get to some of that um, you know face to face contact with them. Have you have you talked to your compatriots in other counties around to get them to maybe say, hey, we're starting this a little. I know they've had other challenges that police do with the dancing and those other things. Have you issued the challenge quite yet to them or not yet? So we have obviously let uh, Prince William County know because a few of these marinas are in Prince William County. We let their Marine Patrol unit know that we'd be doing this. But as far as other law enforcement uh, entities on the river, we have not. Okay. So, so this is the gauntlet we've dropped down. <laughs> oh, just now. Okay, so you heard it here, making news. Um, so I did want to ask you, you know, when, you know, having been in this area for a long time, when you think of Fairfax County, you don't necessarily think of Marine police right off the top of your head. You think of a lot of other things. But how? tell, tell us a little bit about what Marine police do in Fairfax County. So the Fairfax County Marine Patrol Unit is part of the Special Operations Division. Uh, many other entities are out of there, including motors, the helicopter, the SWAT team, canine. All the cool and stuff. Marine, yeah, and mm -hmm. the uh, Marine Patrol, EOD, Explosive Ordnance, and our Technical Response Unit. So within there, obviously, we have the Marine Patrol Unit, and our area of patrolling is we have approximately 79 miles of shoreline, and that's from the Occoquan Bridge Mouth of the Potomac all the way up to the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. Now, of course, that crosses over other boundaries, uh, but the way the state code is read and, of course, working with these other um, agencies, anybody of water from shoreline to shoreline within the state 
can actually be patrolled by them. And there's been plenty of times where, you know, another agency has come to help us out and vice versa. So you all work together. Absolutely. So mostly it's along the Potomac River. Yes, but okay. we have all the, all the marina areas. There's a lot of small Doge Creek and other um, little ports that we go in and patrol. We help out. There's It's not always just enforcement. A lot of it is uh, education, safety checks, uh, a lot of community policing on the boat. And, you know, we get a lot of good feedback. Sometimes people wave us down. We think they're having a an emergency or something, but they just want to come and say hi, or ask us a question about the boat. And our two full-time uh, Marine Patrol officers are both captains, so they they have extensive knowledge Boat of captains. boats. Correct. Yep. Of uh, boating and safety, we give several safety speeches throughout the year, and they attend CACs, which is the um, Citizen Advisory Committee. So we do a lot of those type of things. We also have other public. Um, appearances that we give and safety speeches and we'll check out their boats and docks and so lieutenant shaw i mean obviously you know in this in this day and age in the in the dc area um at large in the washington area virginia maryland you know we we hear a lot about contentious issues between police and the community tell us about how important it is for you all to be visible in the community including the boaters for backpacks and just the impact that that makes when you're dealing with the community at large when you've had interactions with them that are i would say more positive or certainly in a in a non-threatening type of environment what what's the what's the result of that I believe getting out there in the community when they actually get to engage with law enforcement, it takes away some of the negativity that you might see in the media. When you actually engage with an officer, most of the time it, it's a it's a good interaction. Uh, we try to pride ourselves on professionalism. Of course, there is the enforcement side, but you know no one enjoys that side, including ourselves. But there is um, that opportunity to get out there as often as possible to touch as many community members and actually see that we are people doing a job and we're there to help. Um, and that, that goes from children all the way to elderly and everywhere in between. And that's why it's so important that you that you have this connection with the community and being the ones to put the backpacks in their hands as they head to school in Fairfax County. Yes, and, and I think the best part about this program is one of the Marine Patrol officers, like I said, he's a supplemental uh, officer for the summertime. We obviously increase staffing, is a SRO, a school resource officer. So the kids see him all the time. And it's just, a, it's a good program. We hope to get all the other SROs on board and we kind of help distribute these backpacks. That is fantastic. So let's, let me ask you a couple of questions about um, being out on the Potomac River um, for folks who maybe don't spend a lot of time on the Potomac. Um, it's, it, it can be a formidable body of water if you're not ready. Yes. Recently, if you go on our Facebook page, they just released uh, a video of one of our officers or actually one of the captains responding to a call. And you can see how quick that storm comes in. It, it's, a, it's a pretty cool video if you click on the uh, web page on, uh, uh, through our Facebook You go on there and you can see how quick that storm comes up. One minute it's bright and shiny and... And go on, and you'll see how uh, the storm actually impacts the boat and everything. That's that is amazing. So, um, what do you what do you normally do if you're out on the water? You're in what kind of a vessel are you in, or or your are your officers in when they're out on the water? So we have three actual boats. We have a, a larger boat. It's called a safe boat. That's our large boat that you'll see most of the time out there. Uh, we have another one called a metal shark boat, and that has the option and, and the technology on there to help. Uh, try and locate maybe if there's somebody under the water that's mm -hmm. drowned um, and then we have a small inflatable boat that we use and other things so not only do we patrol from the Occoquan bridge mouth like I said all the way to the Woodrow Wilson bridge we're also responsible for approximately 27 lakes throughout the county and there's been plenty of accidents there and boaters go out there canoers and kayak and uh, and we'll go out and patrol those areas as well that must keep you busy it is. Uh, it's good. Like I said, a lot of it is community interaction. We'll go and patrol the, the actual parks, the parking lot. A lot of times they'll ask for help to back up their boat or, to, like I said, to check safety equipment, things like that. 
So if people if people are on a body of water in Fairfax County and they have trouble of some kind, should they call 911? Is that still the number to call? Certainly, yeah. Call 911. Uh, obviously, in the time you're going to need help, you know, for us to deploy the boat is probably not going to be, obviously, the fastest way to get rescue out to you, but also in partnerships with the Fairfax County Fire Department. So if if you have a problem on a boat or you feel stranded or something, you call 911 and we'll utilize the resource we have to help you in any way, of course. And are there um, are there are there things that you want to just sort of tell the public that, you know, now that summertime is here and there's um, just some basic boating safety things that happen um, with, you know, going out on a boat, making sure people have their, their proper uh, flotation devices and things. Are these things that, that pe- you feel that most people are aware of in the boating community or just people maybe going out for the day, they're renting a boat or they're out on a, as you said, on a kayak or a canoe or, or what have you? So I would say more of the, the full-time boaters certainly would have a better idea, but you do have people that rent boats or borrow a friend's boat. Uh, the big things that I would suggest and encourage that they take a boating safety course. Uh, it's required to actually operate a motorboat with uh, 10 horsepower or more. So I think that will teach basic safety and channel markers and how to go through without running into the ground or another boater. Use the uh, safety kill switch. This is a switch that stops the engine, uh, which is also required on all boats that's operated with a motor. Always wear your life jacket. Very important. Always, always wear your life jacket. You never know. I mean, a lot of people are skilled swimmers, but even when we're out there, we always have our life jackets on. And that's on. one of those things, just having some, spent some time on the water, you, there's not enough time to put it on when you have an issue. Correct. You, there's just not. You don't have the ability to figure out where everybody is, what's going on, what's happening with the boat. If your life jacket is not already on you, it's not going to help you. Also, not just having it, is making sure it's a proper fit, uh, all shapes and sizes. A, a children's vest is not going to help you in time of need if, if you're an adult, and vice versa. Obviously, you'll slip out of it. It won't fit. So it's always important before you actually launch the boat, check each other, check your, check your vest, make sure it does fit right. And another thing that can save a lot of the um, issues with you know mechanical problems out in the water is get your boat inspected. Um, you can go through the Coast Guard, they can inspect your boat, or if you see one of the Fairfax County Marine Patrol, certainly Prince William, they're out there often, and ask us to, if you have any questions about a boat, we're pretty knowledgeable with all that. So also I know that just from some of the other areas in the, in the Washington, D.C. area, um, and up in towards Baltimore, we've already had several deaths, I know, in Anne Arundel County already, and we're not even halfway through the summer. A lot of them uh, related to alcohol use when people are boating what's what are the rules on that well of course we want people to be safe if they're going to indulge in any alcohol Um, it is illegal to operate a boat under the influence of alcohol and there's you know bwis your dwis boating while intoxicated i did not know that yes um and they they're constantly changing the kind of the rules and the laws on how we enforce that we want people to go out boat is a recreational thing but you got to be safe you have people swimming in the water you've got to be alert you have to be able to be responsible on the boat and um lieutenant shaw i know that people don't always understand that if you are having people like oh i'm just having a couple beers but having a couple beers in the hot sun in the middle of the day is very different absolutely and just because of your lose your sweating what you know what's happening that makes that difference if you have alcohol and you get dehydrated, it's only going to increase the effects. Um, and, and of course, it's obvious it's going to change your your reaction time. Of course, it's going to probably not have you give your best judgment on things to do. Right. So, we want you to have fun. We want you to enjoy the water. It's beautiful. The region. It's why we have a marine patrol unit. Go out there, enjoy yourself, have fun, just be safe. Yeah. And if you're the captain, you're responsible for the people on your boat. Correct. So yeah. you really do need to to manage that. Um, now, I also know that when we get all these rains that come in, some people like to do the the kayaking and stuff up in Great Falls. Do you guys go all the way up in there as well? 
We do not go up there and patrol. There is the Fairfax County Swift Water Boat Team that will go up there and they will do swift water rescues. That's we are not crazy equipped for that. Stuff. It is. It's really cool. We've done some cross training with them, and it is. It's cool. It does not look like fun to me, but I'm sure some people enjoy it. Um, and so. Um, Obviously, you guys stay very, very busy in the summertime with your Marine Patrol unit. Um, how about in the wintertime? Does, do things slow down? Naturally, it will slow down. There's obviously not as many boaters, but with this new boat we have, we were able to stay out longer into, you know, we'll go out until October and still be out there on the boat. Um, that's why I told you we, we increase the number of officers we have during the summertime. We have to increase the personnel because of the workload. It goes back to our two full-time Marine Patrol officers during the winter, but there's a ton of upkeep with the boats, and we still patrol the, the parks. We still maintain contact with the marina, but there is a lot of work even in the off-season for anybody who owns a boat knows the amount of work. And <laughs> That's when most of the work takes place, right? So, and you told me how many lakes you guys are responsible for in Fairfax County, and I already forgot. It's 27. It's about 27. There's a couple that are it's about 27 and do you guys have to respond if there's you know god forbid a child who's gone walking or an adult uh, on a pond that's not quite or a lake that's not quite frozen as they might think it is or their dog runs out there i mean the all these things happen so initially like i said if you call 911 for that time if if you're in dire need you call 911 the marine patrol is not going to be the first one to get there obviously right. be able to deploy our boats that quickly on a lake you know, the rescue is going to show up, the fire department, your Fairfax County police patrol officers will show up. Uh, if it's a, a situation where someone's gone missing under the water, yeah, we're going to come out there. Uh, I also am the supervisor of the underwater search and recovery team. So we work in conjunction with uh, the Marine Patrol to deploy uh, divers into the water. Do Tell us about what the divers do. That must be a very, very difficult, uh, critical but difficult job. So it's not just for recovery of a swimmer or somebody that falls in the ice. We also do evidence recovery. Mm -hmm. People throw items into the water. Our team will go down there. We have technology to scan the water and, and go in and get a piece of evidence that you might try to discard in the water. You're going to get the bad guys, aren't you? That's give amazing. Give trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool, though. But um, I would imagine that the divers have to go through a tremendous amount of training because diving in and of itself is adds a layer of danger. Yeah, and there's obviously the safety thing. Uh, the first thing is to make sure the officers and my divers are safe. So we, we'll take a look at the whole situation and make the best approach, the safest approach to recover whatever it is. So anybody out on the water, though, at any time of the year, you don't have long if you don't swim well in the water or certainly in that situation in the winter, but you don't have a long time. People think, oh, I'll be fine. I can float. Is that true? Yeah. This goes back to having your the proper flotation device, having your proper um, PDF, life jacket. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, and if it doesn't fit right, you're, yeah, it's, it's you don't have much time at all. I, I would hope that you could swim if you're going to take that time to go out in the kayak or the new thing with the uh, paddle, paddle board, board or yeah. the surfing stand up yoga board. That is uh, You see a lot of them out Very there doing that now. To do that. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing to actually to see some of the skills that uh, developed out there on the Watch water. Watch out for the wake. That's yeah. all we're going to see. If you're, the on no the paddle board, you're in the no wake zone. Uh, but all those. I, <laughs> I'm a firm believer of having a, a level of swimming, obviously, and having a proper life jack PDF with you for safety. All right. That's awesome. So um, that is, uh, I just want to circle back, though, and reiterate some of the things that people can do. And I want you to, again, give us um, the places where people can, can bring the backpacks. Absolutely. So we started accepting the backpacks on July 15th. We're going to make our final pickup on uh, August 23rd. So in time for oh, school. I'm sorry, August 17th, but we will announce the winners of the three gift cards on August 23rd. Okay. The participating locations, once again, is the Prince William Marina, Fairfax Yacht Club, Captain John S. Beach Marina, Occoquan Regional Park, Occoquan Harbor Marina, Mount Vernon Yacht Club, Hoffmasters Marina, Belmont Bay Marina. Uh, anywhere, any one of those marinas that you go to, like I said, you drop off a backpack, 
There are forms you can fill out, put it in the backpack. Vellum Mortgage will actually be pulling the uh, raffle for the winners, the lucky winners, and they'll be making contact with them. Like I said, very generous of them to donate the three $300 gas cards. Uh, you can reach us on Twitter, at Fairfax County PD, and Fairfax County Police Department, Facebook. So have you heard from any... Um you know, like stores, any sporting goods or department stores that say, hey, we want to donate a whole bunch of backpacks to you or not quite yet because I know this is your first year. We have not, but thanks to programs like yours and trying to get out the, the message, uh, hopefully we can have some more of that. Absolutely. So that would be a great way to do that. Um, just generally speaking, in your interactions with these marinas and with the boaters and the boating community, how, how have people responded to to this uh, Boaters for Backpacks program. They're excited, and I could tell you the competition amongst the different marinas and yacht clubs. Competition breeds success. These guys are fired up. They all want to win. Uh, there's been talk about maybe a trophy at the end for the winning amount of uh, backpacks collected from and each marina. And it was marina. this big. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> so uh, very generous community. Uh, I believe it will be a success. Um, I look forward to see how many backpacks we get and obviously seeing the face of the kids when we do pass out the backpacks. That is fantastic. So um, one of the other things I was thinking of is that a lot of times when you go and you represent a different, I mean, a lot of folks who are listening, when they think of the police department, you mentioned, you know, the ordinance and the and the marina and um, the, I'm sorry, the marine police and the divers. You don't think of all of those different aspects of policing. Do you think this might spark an interest in some of these young people to to think about that? It's not only just a not necessarily a police officer in a in a patrol car wandering around, but a police officer out on a boat. I mean, how fun is that? Absolutely. Uh, I'm not in the recruiting section, but I can tell you the Fairfax County Police Department is always recruiting. Uh, there's some great people in recruiting, and, and I'm sure they're getting that message out. And they have. Uh, uh, career day and they they try to get it out you can always go on and look up our on our website and how to apply it's an excellent agency and I encourage everyone to at least take a look if you have the thought to go into law enforcement Fairfax County has a lot of different uh, entities and a lot of exciting career paths you can take and I encourage people to come and apply is it difficult the the program to get in to be a police officer? Well, of course, we want to recruit and hire the best and the brightest. Um, and that gets pushed across from the, the chief's message, diversity. We're trying to push that out to all uh, aspects of the community. We welcome everybody to come in and apply. As far as the background process, of course, it is extensive. We want to make sure we're hiring the best. Uh, and then you go through the academy after being trained up. Get out there and get it. That is awesome. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay, so um, I just want to give the information. If people want to get more information about the Boaters for Backpacks, they can go on your Facebook page. And right now, if you go to fairfaxcountypolice.gov and look on Facebook, it's actually the Marine Police, um, Marine Patrol who are featured this month. Correct. So you can So look forward later in the week. And next week, uh, they'll be doing some Facebook Live things with one of our captains. I don't want to give away all the secrets, but um, so they'll be going out, and we have some other um, events that we're going to participate throughout this month to really get out the message. So we're that, excited. That is fantastic. Well, I want to um, just thank my guests this morning. I've been speaking with Lieutenant Kevin Shaw with the Marine Patrol Unit from the Fairfax County Police Department. Um, Sergeant Greg Bedore, we just couldn't get him to be quiet. He just kept talking and talking and talking because he's with media relations and uh, with the Fairfax County Police Department as well. And I want to thank you both for joining me today and listening to DMV Spotlight on ESPN 630, the sports capital. And of course, you can check us out online at ESPN 630 DC. Com. And don't forget to go to the Facebook page and the Twitter account. One more is, is what, Lieutenant Shaw? Twitter is the at Fairfax County PD, and the Facebook is Fairfax County Police. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Barbara Britt on ESPN 630, the sports capital. And join us again next week for DMV Spotlight. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, Barbara.